Today we have Ben and Cynthia with us, founders of Chack and Brush. They are amazing artists and amazing people here in Miami. They have managed to create a design studio that does more than painting walls and murals. Stay with us to watch the full interview. Hello, everyone. We're back at Coffee with Founders. Today we have Cynthia and Benjamin from Chack and Brush. Hey, guys. Welcome to our channel. Thank How you are you? Much. Thank you for having us. We're excited to talk to you guys. You guys have done amazing things here in the city. So we wanted to talk uh, to you guys a little bit about your story, who you are, what you do, and why you do it. So why don't we start with who are you guys? Tell us a little bit about the story and how this whole thing started. Um, you want me to take it? Yeah. All right. So we're talking brush, Cynthia and Ben. So the, the company is, is our initials. And we are a commercial mural design studio. So we started out just painting signs and chalkboards for like restaurants. And now we do large scale mural projects, um, marketing projects for brands, businesses, cities, um, mainly focused on murals, signage, lettering and social media. Awesome. That is great. And, and I think, you know, the interesting part is how you guys got to it. I think, uh, you know, that's what you guys became and who you are now, but tell us a little bit of how it all began. Uh, you guys were in totally different industries uh, and then you started, you got together and this just started happening. So walk through us through that uh, journey. You wanna take it away? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so originally kind of like the, the very beginning of it was, um, I was working as a emergency room nurse um, before I met Cynthia and she was working in fashion. Uh, I know one day she was out in Wynwood painting a mural. Somebody saw her, asked her if she could do a chalkboard. Uh, she was like, yeah, sure, no problem. I think she like looked it up on YouTube how to do it. Um, she did that first chalkboard and then posted it on Instagram. And then, you know, that led to somebody else. Hey, can you do mine? Can you do mine? And it just sort of snowballed from there. Um, she asked me to kind of jump in and help out, uh, you know, a few months into it, uh, which I did. I was kind of just helping like paperwork wise, you know, finance, collecting, things like that. Right. Um, and then it just sort of progressed where the jobs just started getting, you know, bigger and bigger and more and more clients. And then it essentially got to the point where, you know, I had to jump in on the painting as well. So because I was working as a nurse, you know, as a nurse, you have to work, you know, at least three days a week, three 12 hour shifts. So I would like bunch all my days together. So I'd work six, six days on as a nurse and then eight days off with the business. Wow. So we did that pretty solid for about three years. Yeah. So, wow. you know, you know full time like that you know, working two jobs. And then it, it finally got to the point where the business was doing really, really well. And, you know, with any small business, I mean, anybody who's a small business owner will tell you that you got to be both feet in, you know, as long as you're kind of one foot in one foot out, it's really hard to scale up to make progress. You really kind of get stuck in a, in a, in a certain space. All right. So we definitely got to the point where, you know, Cynthia and I had the conversation and, and she was essentially like, listen, you, you need to, you need to leave the hospital. So, you know, the good thing as a nurse is that like, you know, I keep my license current. So that's always something that's, you know, like a fallback, but I left nursing. I resigned my position after, you know, 13 years as emergency room nurse. Wow. And I would say like the moment we went, that I went both feet on the business and we were both completely in the business, I would say almost doubled overnight. And from that point, we have just had steady growth for seven years. And, and I know that's, you know, in small business, that's pretty unheard of like that, that you have that kind of uh, forward movement. Uh, but we've been very, very lucky, uh, you know, other than the fact that we work very, very hard. The business has just progressed forward for the last seven years. Uh, a few years in, we brought on our first employee, Kat, who is still with us. Uh, she does design and she does, you know, lettering, chalkboards. She kind of does it all. Um, and at that point, the business started growing and growing. And we were really focusing a lot on chalkboards and, and hand-painted logos. And at that point, Cynthia was doing a lot of sign painting. So traditional sign painting, which... You know, typically you have to apprentice for. I mean, that's something that you have to, you know, work with another sign painter and apprentice for years. Right. But because we don't have that here in Miami, again, same thing. She just looked it up online and taught herself how to sign paint, taught me how to sign paint. <laughs> and, and we kind of progressed that way. And one thing led to another, and we, we got our first mural. And once we got that taste for that mural, I think we both knew, like, this is what we want to do. There's a lot of mural competition in Miami. So we sort of, kind of not even uh, purposely, I think more organically kind of grew our business in the way that we wanted it to grow and then kind of progressed to the point where we're 
very rarely doing chalkboards. We're doing logos here and there, but really it's just lo uh, murals. murals yeah. Large scale murals. Right. And they do keep getting bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger. Yeah, and I think yeah. now that's very popular. You know, I, I guess you guys started with the, the Wynwood thing, all the walls and everything, and, and that whole, you know, kind of of a generation of murals, it became very popular. And, and you guys took that whole thing and, and, and wrote it with it, you know? Uh, so I think it's very interesting. Then you were talking about, you know, being an emergency room nurse and now you're painting, you know, like, so if you ask me to start painting, there's no way in hell I can do it. So did you have a little bit of a, of that talent and you just didn't work on it or it was just all taught by Cynthia? Well, I, I, so I grew up near Miami and I grew up heavily in the graffiti scene. So when I was, you know, okay. I, was, I was one of those kids running around the city, spray painting on everything and, and, yeah. you know, tagging everything up. And that was kind of my, my kind of center of art was graffiti. I, you know, obviously there was, you know, other artists like Dali and, you know, uh, Kahlo that, that I always loved, but it never even, it was never even a thought in my head of like that being something that, that I would do it. Wow. And that's what I thought I'd be doing my entire career. Yeah. Um, so I had been, a, it had been a very long time since I had painted, touched a can, anything. So when the business started and I started helping out Cynthia, it was essentially starting from scratch. I mean, she was, you know, even like letter structure, things yeah. like that. Yeah. That was all sort of Cynthia teaching me. Like, would start, like, would do it. like I would do the outlines and he would fill and then little by little, he would start doing like his own outlines. Um, I'm really afraid of heights and he's not afraid of heights at all. So in the beginning, the first time I had to drive like a lift, um, you know, that was really cool to have him there because I was really scared of that. So like we help, we help each other. That's a good team. That's exactly what you need to do. And it's, I think it's very interesting. It's incredible how you were saying, um, yeah, you, you, you guys are basically self-taught and seeing that you have to go, that's basically what you do. You went on YouTube and you figure it out. You watch a video, which is something that a lot of people say when they're starting a business, I don't know how to do it. Let me just hire somebody that understand that. And then maybe right. they can teach me, but you did the opposite. Let's talk a little bit about that. Let's go back to seven years ago. You said um, that this has grew exponentially. So seeing what you have done today, seeing what you have done, for example, this year, walking around Coral Gables and seeing those amazing murals. Now let's just go back to that exact moment where you went online and tried to look it up. Um, basically try to teach yourself how yeah. to do it. Fake it until you make it. Yeah, what was going on in your mind? Why, do you, did you know you wanted to have a business and take it to the point where you guys are today? What were you looking for? So not at all. Um, I had I was aware of like lettering because of Instagram and following other artists. Like I was already following a couple of people and had a, a really good friend, uh, Rob, who actually did like really nice lettering. So I knew that that was like an art form. Okay. And growing up in Cuba, um, my like my nanny's husband was a sign painter for the town. So all of the bodegas and stuff like that, like he would paint the sign. So like I knew that that was something that like painting nice letters was like a skill. But I never really put two and two together until I had to do that chalkboard. And I just looked up, I looked up lettering, I looked up calligraphy. Um, but I went in like I, I didn't take a ruler or level. Um, wow. I had no idea what I was doing. It, it went well. The client really liked it. I got paid for it, but it was it was like a journey. Um, I did watch a lot of tutorials, do a lot of practicing. Um, finally, getting an iPad was really helpful. <laughs> but even through all that, like in the beginning, there was a time when, like you said, like I thought the answer was to hire other people. Like I thought the answer was to hire more skilled designers, somebody who had gone to like graphic design, you know, yeah, school, school or training. somebody who like, had more experience painting. And we realized that that wasn't going to work for us at all because like that's not what our clients wanted like our clients wanted like us and our work for Thank whatever you of you mm -hmm. so um so yeah we shifted from that and it was also a matter of just like growing confidence and confidence in myself that like I do know what I'm doing and, and maybe when I was little I was learning stuff when I was watching and I didn't even know you know yeah. like um so yeah it was a mix of that it's a mix of of just a lot of content on the internet, which if you want to learn anything, it is on the internet. Yeah. It's out there. Like if you want to learn to weave baskets, like you can learn that on the internet. Yeah, and yeah. you're living proof of, living proof yeah. of that, definitely. And then also knowing that like intuitively, like I, I do have a good eye, like we do have a good eye together and there's no, art is not like medicine where there's like a right and a wrong way or like 
you could do some serious damage if you do things the wrong way. Like right. the worst mistake I can make, I can paint over it. So yeah, yeah that, that is a funny thing, you know, like that switch from being an emergency room then to just like, you know, yeah. painting walls, which is to me, that's amazing. But what you're describing is for me, it's just true entrepreneurship. And it's just amazing that you guys can just, you know, go and teach yourself and, and go do it, find a passion that you guys just fall in love with. And now you you have a business of it. And, and I, and I want to get into that side of the business a little bit, because a lot of people, you know, for you it was painting uh, for other people might be cooking or whatever it is. Uh, and there is, there is a, there's a passion somewhere, but when you, when it comes to the business side, then you need to get into a lot of stuff that is boring. You need to get into paperwork. You need to get into, there are a lot of legal things that you got to get organized. And yes, <laughs> I can see that. Uh, and, and I want to get into that a little bit, Ben, if you can, since you're the man, uh, I, I want you to, to walk me through that when you started like, okay, this is a business now, we need to get this serious, we need to get a brand, we need to, you know, start doing structural things and, and build a real business now. So I think the way that it started was it kind of started more on the brand end where, you know, we came up with, Cynthia came up with a business name, we, you know, we made, you know, uh, business cards and t-shirts and things like that. And then it was kind of like stumbling through one thing or another. So kind of once we had that, it was like, oh, we need to have a company. So, we, you know, we went online, started an LLC. And again, this was without any direction or help, which, you know, at the time, like now looking back, it yeah. would have been really beneficial to have somebody guide us through yeah. that, but right. it was really like a trial by fire. So once we did that, what we saw was that with each job that we did, each project, there was some sort of problem that came up that was like, you know, man, how can we avoid this again? And it's sort of, a, you know, we both kind of got to that point of, we need a contract, you know, and at the same time, you know, Cynthia sort of came up with, Hey, we need a proposal because we can't just send people. Yeah. We were doing it by email. It really like, just happened. Like, like we just like everything that already exists in a business book, we just did it the really slow, hard way. Yeah. It was oh, as know. organic as it gets. Yeah, yeah, it's way too organic. We were like, wait, there's probably a paper that people send out with <laughs> the cost on it. They don't just tell them like, hey, I think it's going to be this much money. Yeah. Um, and that's how we were doing it. We were yeah. doing it by email, like emailing back and forth. So I think it got to the point where it was the problems. It was the problems that were coming up, you know, in, in dealing with clients and payment and yeah. sort of understanding the scope of work. That's where we really kind of had to stop and say, hold on. You know, we had the proposal and then we started coming up with a contract. Uh, the contract we started with was sort of like a very basic artist contract that we used as like a template. And then from there, what we did was we adjusted some of those things there to more apply to us, remove things that didn't apply to us yeah. and kind of started there. And from that point on, what we did was every time something happened on a job where it was like, man, we just, we, this shouldn't have happened. The running joke became put it in the contract. So uh, our contract is now like 10 pages long yeah. and it has, you know, 15 or 20 different sections that kind of lays out all of our terms and, and really it is, a, it is a full legally yeah. binding contract. So the contract part, I can't even begin just to, to say how crucial that is for yeah. any, any artist, no matter what scale you're on. And not just artists, like you guys were saying, photographers, yeah. bakers, caterers, like, um, Completely, completely important. Yeah, because it, without the contract, everything is left up to interpretation and you'll get a lot of, oh, but I thought this and I thought that. And to be honest with you, we still, you know, we still have that challenge where, you know, we'll send somebody a contract, they'll sign the contract, send it back. And then throughout the projects, if something comes up, we have had clients tell us straight out, oh, I didn't like, read we the contract. Read it, yeah. I think for us, yeah. it was just a switch from like, um, like it's very easy to be one artist and right. get murals and you just say, hey, it's this much, you charge, you go, you paint it. Yeah. But once it was two of us, once we had a team, once we had several jobs, we realized that there needed to be a system, there needed to be yeah. like that paperwork, we needed to have a way to organize our design system, our everything. So right now there is a full, full, full system that happens from the minute that somebody contacts us to the way that we meet with them, the way that we send our proposals, the way that we structure our design so that we're not late, um, the way that we structure our onsite. We do have um, administrative help um, on our team that helps us with all of that. 
And we've also been really lucky to have people, mentors, like that we've just been able to reach out and ask for help. I think the first person was the owner of Educos, who's one of our own clients. Right. And he was the very first person who was like, hey, you guys have a design studio and you need to market yourselves this way and maybe change your name and maybe this. Um, that was a big, that was a big switch. We originally, when we started off, we, we were called Winwood, Winwood Sign Painting. Painting. And what we would run into is it was great at yeah. first. Once we wanted to start moving into like murals and larger projects, it was a real challenge because when people would see our name, it was Winwood and Sign Painting. And if they weren't looking for Winwood or Signs, yeah, they wouldn't. Yeah. There was no way it would come up. Yep. People think Winwood, like graffiti, expensive graffiti, and yeah. then sign yeah. painting. And maybe large scale. Yeah, 100%. That's another yeah. limitation. And that's something you, you guys just mentioned something very, very interesting. You said you changed your name. That, of course, when you're talking about the sign studio, it not only talks about what you guys do, but what you guys basically who you are and right. everything that's behind. Is there in your process, right, when you are talking to a client, when you're designing a proposal, is there anything else that you guys work on other than the painting itself? How do you work on the messaging? How do you help the message be part of the whole, a whole campaign or the brand of the person that's hiring you? Yeah. So the way we approach our murals is like 100%, like what you're getting from us, the least that you're getting from us is the mural because you live in Miami where you probably have a cousin who can paint that mural. Um, so we view murals as like a fully interactive marketing strategy that begins the moment we start working together on your design. So because we do have like a following and we do have such an awesome community around us, clients know that the minute we start working with them and we start sharing about them, other people become interested and they just sort of add to this like little network of, of small businesses that we have here in Miami, like even, even you guys right now. For sure. So we definitely, it's not something that runs up our price because it's something that is mutually beneficial, that sort of social media engagement that we have, but that's something that is huge. And I also think not falling too deeply into that social media trap, our murals are still great murals because right now everybody has like a pair of wings or like something on their wall that people can pose with. And that's not like a true investment and in a piece of art and a true marketing campaign that's really going to last you and that's really going to like compete with everybody else that has that. So I think we're very clear and we're very strong in our messaging that like we're more than just a mural studio. We are a full like fully engaged, um, really like a marketing studio. For sure. And um, sorry, go ahead, Ben. One of the things like to, to speak to Cynthia's point there, like one of the things that, you know, is part of our, our packaging, like as, as part of our, what we provide to clients beyond just the artwork is content. Because when we're on a job site, we're constantly photographing, we're constantly video, running videos, we're doing time lapses on the larger exterior projects. We do work with a, a, a drone, a, a drone yeah. uh, operator who gets drone shots of us working in the final product. And what we do is all of that, you know, you, you know, all the raw footage and then all the footage that Cynthia edits into TikToks and, and Reels, we provide that to the client. Like we have like a shared Dropbox and everything we do, they have access to as well. Yeah. So not only are they getting art, they're getting content that we're creating for them that is ready to go for yeah. their social media. And, and people and love to see how a mural is being painted. So oh, I yeah. can totally see that. Yeah, or anything. I mean, the people love how cakes are made you know it's just right. everything all the processes and now it's just so visual and, and that's what the beauty of social media and what you guys are taking advantage of uh it's just that you can actually see the process of creating things which right. you know we didn't have before it's yeah. been really important for us i think one of the reasons our social media was so popular back when it was just instagram is that we were posting videos we were posting like TikToks before TikTok existed. We were making like our one minute process videos. So now once that changed, so many people have just stayed behind and we've been able to like stay current with social media. We were doing it from the very beginning, like time lapses before it was even on the phone. Like you had to have like a little app to do a time lapse. Wow. Um, because we were just so excited to be like doing what we were doing that we just wanted to see it when we got home and like share it. like. We've always been like, oh, like take a picture of me doing this. And you know what? Like it's silly. And when we've hired people, it's it's been difficult to get them to think like that, to think like I have to stop working to take a picture of myself working. But like that is work. Like that is 
more than 50% of the work because if we don't do it, then nobody knows that we did it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, well, I think, go ahead. I was gonna say a big part of that is you had asked like when we started doing that, did we start doing it for the clients? And then Cynthia said it wasn't for the clients. It was more yeah. uh, our excitement, but also, you know, because we don't do any marketing, merchandising, advertising, you know, we were just sort of posting this online, you know, for, for other people to see without the thought of the business that it would generate. And what, yeah. we, what we found though, is that the more we posted online, the more business we were getting. And then, you know, essentially we were starting off posting, you know, the process here and there, but a lot of finished work. Yeah. And then it sort of transitioned where Cynthia was like, oh, let me start posting behind the scenes and kind of like us working. And that was a, yeah. a, a piv like a pivotal like inflection point for the business when, when she started posting the behind the scenes, the, yeah. the process, like her and I working together, that social media response was yeah. well beyond what we could have expected. That's one of the things that I always tell anybody that is like a friend or like comes with me to, with like questions about starting a business. It's like, you have to get in front of the camera yeah. unless you are like Walmart or something like that. You have to make it about yourself. Um, just like you guys, like I'm sure people will care that you, you are a couple also and you, you're passionate about coffee and, and people care about that about us. Like I, I, I have no shame in saying that our story, I'm sure has influenced the amount of jobs that we've gotten. But that's 100%. Really, that's part of. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, at, at this, I think at this point, you know, clients are looking for something more than just a piece of art on the wall. They need something beyond that. Right. And when they're working with, you know, at this point where we've, we've established a reputation, um, not just as the quality of work that we do, but but our story and our team. So for at sure. this point, like a lot of clients, when they reach out to us, it's not just for the artwork. They always do ask, well, what about the video, the content you create? Yeah. Because they understand that there's a story there and like they're just like their own businesses, they have a story. We do too. And to be able to, for them to show how their story progressed and then the artists they're working with, with their story and how that progresses, it becomes a sort of symbiotic relationship where we both have a really interesting story and on both ends, our end and their end, we're, we're both eager to show that to people on social media and the response has been terrific. Yeah, that's great. And you've mentioned, you've mentioned the team a few times. Um, and, and I think to me, that's very interesting because your brand and what you guys do is very personal to you guys. So when, when your clients are looking for you, they're looking for the two of you, they want your art, they want your work, they want to see you painting the murals. So uh, I think that could be very limiting sometimes like to scale because you're the one you got, you know, it's four hands that you guys have right there. Uh, and, and that's what the client ultimately wants. So I guess I have two questions for you guys. Uh, one, it would be, you, you need to get every time you get an employee and you, you get someone on board on your team, you know, they, they need to feel what you guys feel and you need to pass that, that passion that you guys have along to those employees. That's the first question. How do you guys do to, to keep them and, and to have that vision, to put that vision into their eyes as well? Uh, and number two, how are you guys managing to scale, you know, and being okay? Yeah, I mean, this is my assistant and, and she's as good as I am, you know, like you can trust her with your eyes closed as, as close as I am, so, you know, so how do you guys do that? Yeah, so that was exactly our thought when we wanted to grow the business. It was like, how can we grow the business when the business is us? And we're already, you know, like Ben is 45, I am 33. We, we realistically will not be painting in 15, 20 years. And yet we want to continue to stay like in this business. So in terms of bringing in employees and getting them to care, actually, I'm going to answer your second question first. Yeah. So getting people to buy into the fact that chalk and brush wasn't just us was super hard from the, from the very beginning. It was like immediate, like, eh, like we have a problem with this. So we went back to like how exactly we started, which is social media and social media is how you're going to control your narrative and your message. So what are we going to do? We're going to do social media all about the team. And we're going to talk about the team. We're going to show you their faces. We're going to tell you about them. We're going to show you what they're doing that way. Like you're already seeing it up front. Like, right. so like chalk and brush is no longer just an event. Right. The first thing, you know, beyond after the social media was like since said in our contract, making sure that clients understand, you know, yeah. that we are a team and that 
it might not necessarily be Cynthia and Ben that are on site. Yeah. So that, that was a big component of it. And, you know, again, like Cynthia said, like showing that we have a team and, you know, that yeah. we're talented. On our end, in terms of the how, it's been really challenging. And that, you know, scaling up has been very challenging, which is why we're doing it very slowly, because we have to find, you know, a certain combination of factors, which is, you know, somebody who's available, somebody who has a solid work ethic, somebody who is talented, someone who can, you know, pick up on the work learn that we're doing. our process because we don't paint just because you can paint a canvas and you were really good at painting in high school and everybody yeah. tells you like you're a really good painter doesn't mean that you can learn the exact like way in which right in which we paint yeah and so, also that kind of like sort of easygoing attitude like you have to blend in with the rest of the team because you're right. going to spend eight hours a day together and not just that but also that we we want we have a certain aesthetic and not just like the artistic aesthetic but our business like we have a certain client facing yeah. uh you know aesthetic that we want to make sure that we communicate in a certain way whether it's by email keeping things although professional light and yeah. fun because we're an art company we shouldn't be super serious yeah you should still have that feeling that you're like hiring a like a cool artist right. so we yeah. do have like cool artists we have a very long pdf of like our just artists procedures that everybody gets and everybody reviews and it includes things like when we go into a place we say hi to everybody who's there like the person who is cleaning we, we're going to say hi and introduce ourselves so that we have this sort of like um yeah the appreciation already, for like morale going there. yeah and we, yeah. everybody sort of keeps like this chalk and brush vibe when it comes to our clients um we've also told them like they want us to grow just like we want them to grow like when you guys are opening your restaurant you're not going to be there brewing every cup of coffee and serving every cup of coffee probably so neither are we like we've created the recipe yeah. and now we are going to supervise our kitchen and make sure that it gets done right. yeah. and this same um like viewpoint is the same thing that makes our artists care like i want to make sure our artists feel like our work is their work. So that's why their face is out there. Their name is out there. They're not painting for Cynthia and Ben. Like I'm not taking credit for them right. painting. Um, and we'll say that up front. Like there are a lot of murals that we don't, we don't go. We just go in and supervise to make sure right. it's looking awesome. We do quality checks. Um, we talk to the client, we talk to the artists, but yeah, at, at no point am I pretending that I painted something that they painted. Right. I'm giving them ownership. I ask their opinion. And, and that's how I think we've made it work with the small team that we have, which has not been everybody. Everybody does not work out. No, I just, I think that that's, you know, that's one of the big things that we focused on is that when we bring somebody on, you know, there's always that trial period and making yeah. sure that they, you know, they get what we're doing. They get, you know, how we communicate with clients and what, you know, how we want to be seen, you know, based on how we treat people, how we treat our clients, how we, how we interact with them. The idea that we really are here for yeah. the client, whereas, you know, there's a whole spectrum of artists in Miami and, and, and that ranges from, you know, us to other artists who are super talented and super popular that you can hire for your business and they're going to come in, but you know their style of art. Like you're essentially getting their art, maybe your logo or something like that, but, you know, you're getting their art and not to take away from that because there are artists that do that that are wildly talented. Yeah. For us though, our approach is, you know, although Cynthia has her own style and when she does her own art and she, you know, and she sort of incorporates that into the typography or for our business, which is something that is, you know, important to us. <clears throat> the idea is, is that when we work with a client, we are creating art that is specifically for them. We'll meet with that client and get a feel for what their needs are. And we create that art to meet their needs so that they have an original piece of art that was created just for them. Yes, we have a style and stylistically, it's gonna be within our, our wheelhouse, but they know that this is not something that they're gonna go and see, you know, the same piece of art, but with a different logo somewhere. Yeah, that makes sense. And and I think it's 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 tough in any business, you know, and, and as I was thinking about your team, it was, to me, I was just like, it's really hard because, you know, in our business like you were, you were saying, yeah, I'm, I'm going to develop processes and I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be done this way. This is, this is the amount of coffee and this is how you're going to brew it. And this is how it's done for you. There is a lot of pieces that your creativity and your personal touch adds to. And, and, and it's a lot of it. And so, and, and I think it comes down to the foundation and what you guys build at the beginning. And, and because when you're talking about how you're transmitting everything 
to your employees, it seems to me like you guys have a very clear picture of who you guys are and what you guys are. And that's what set the ground for somebody who's around you. You're going to be very knowledgeable and you're going to be like, okay, yeah, this person is going to be on board. This person is not going to be on board. And, and they can sense that too. Like I can sense it right now. You guys are talking and I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I would love to work with these guys. Uh, well, um, during college, I actually worked, I worked at Best Buy. I worked at Best Buy for four years because they do tuition reimbursement when you're in school, which was, it was a great environment to work in. And I love technology. Um, but one of the things that I learned there is just how intensely they train their employees on their corporate values, on their process, on their customer service. It was like overkill. Like it was, we basically were in school for this, like all the time. You're constantly being trained in a really positive way. So I think that that's something that that I took away and that I see that a lot of the brands that we work with, they're also very like intense about like, these are our core values and everybody in their office knows those values. So yeah. that's something that I took from like corporate life and implemented it. And I also worked in fashion um, where we manufacture plenty of times overseas. So I got very used to the process of designing something and then having to break down that design into a way that somebody else that I would never speak to because we didn't speak the same language, right? could then make that design right wow. so that's another thing that like i think sets right. us apart is when we design our murals like we break them down into a way that our artists right. don't even have to worry about it like they're just wow. going to go in and paint yeah. and i think that the other side to that is be, you know same comes from fashion so she's used to that technical end of it and because i come from a medical oh, yeah. community, because i come from a medical community you know, in, in medicine and especially in emergency medicine, things like that, everything runs on an algorithm. So you basically this, and then you do yeah. this and you do this. If this happens, then you do this. If this happens, then you do this. So it is a very clear path of that you're following. Yeah. So that's definitely helped us in the, in the sense of the paperwork aspect of it, not just the contracts and proposals, but also the, the documentation that our uh, artists, when they go to a job site, they have an actual folder, like a tech, a technical yeah. pack that has everything in it. Color codes, yeah. sizes, everything. And it does take, like you were saying, a little bit of that creative, like creative, we just go in at the last minute and we do like this thing that like saves it all. It, it does take that away. Yeah. Um, but that just means that we have to make sure that that is put in in the design portion right once yeah. that design is done it is locked and loaded and it's not going to change well um, unless yeah unless we want to go back and like revisit our contract and have a completely different conversation and i think it's just great and uh i think to close i wanted to go back a little bit and uh ben you you mentioned at the beginning the struggles and and you said something about you would have loved or it would have been helpful to have somebody guide you through processes and, and paperwork and legal stuff and, and, and many things, right? Uh, what would you do if you go back? Uh, because I, a lot of times I think we're afraid to ask for help. Uh, we're embarrassed uh, to, to say that we don't know something and ask for, for advice or something. So uh, now knowing what you know, uh, seven years have gone by, you, you guys have a successful business now. What would you do different? Uh, what would you recommend someone that is just you seven years ago? So, I mean, there's, there's actually several things that I can say that, you know, in, in, a, in a perfect world, if I could go back and do that. So the first one being, you know, whether it's a business coach or somebody who has, a, has an idea of how to run a business, sort of having somebody that can coach you along in things like, hey, you really need a contract. Even if it's a basic contract, yeah it protects you because I can't tell you the number of times in, in the beginning of our, yeah. our career where we lost a significant amount of money. We had significant issues with clients because we had nothing in writing and it became a he said, she said type situation. So a contract would be the first thing. Or maybe but, even taking like a small business course, right. something like yeah, that. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So things like that, but also, you know, I would say understanding the, the most basic thing, which is that you have, this is a business. It's not, yeah. so the, the idea that, and, and this is something honestly that, that Cynthia had to teach me, which is that it's not just a side hustle. Like this is, it's a business and you need to treat it like a business. So, you know, making sure that you really look into things, whether it's taking a business course or just going online and Googling, 
how to run a business, getting a book on it, sort of educating yourself on accounting, like little, all, yeah, just all little the pitfalls, like all the things, all the traps that you're going to fall into, I think would have been definitely helpful. I, I will say on the other hand, though, the struggles that we went through definitely helped us get to where we are and helped us become much yeah. more confident in, in not just ourselves and our art, but in the way that we run our business. Like we know what we're doing. Yeah. We understand this is a legitimate business. And that is something that we communicate to our clients when, you know, when we're engaging them for our work or they're engaging us actually, it's that, you know, when they ask about pricing or when they ask about process, we are able to explain to them that, like you said, we're not just a group of artists. We are a, a, a legitimate yeah. business that has built a reputation on professionalism. And, you know, that professionalism yeah. starts with proposals and contracts and makes its way through, you know, the entire process. And honestly, maybe in the beginning, if we did have like a coach or something like that, like maybe our process wouldn't have ended up being as personal and as right. fine for right. us as it is. Because maybe they would have come in and said, you know what I mean? Like you need to do, do this. It this way. You need this kind of contract and you wouldn't have maybe like boxed us into thinking that that's the way it had to be yeah. done. And, and so, I think a lot of a lot of times it's hard because you don't even know what the challenges are going to be. You right. know, like and 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 I think about it all the time and I say, okay, so you know, get a get a coach or read a book and what kind, because I don't know what I'm facing until I actually have the problem. I'm like, oh crap, that's what I needed to know. Mm -hmm. You know, but I didn't know it. So it's it's it, it's hard to do and until you actually start hitting that wall and and, and going through it. Uh, with your own experience and what you said, I think, especially, I think with your stories, like you have a very personal brand and, and all those experiences and all those challenges and, and those, you know, difficulties yeah. that you guys had is what, what shaped you to, to be where you are today. Yeah, Absolutely. I agree. I mean, I think if anything, we could have maybe had a little more like believe in ourselves, like stood up for ourselves a little um, bit more, um, stressed out a little bit less but other than that i mean I think <laughs> that's out. that's really hard to do when you're starting a business yeah, I right mean, I just part of it and everybody <laughs> goes through that but then i think one of the one of the big things just in, in terms of the business and kind of how you view it and it's something that i experienced early on when we started and i also experienced now in terms of hearing and speaking to people who you know my friends who are still in the medical community still nurses and physicians and things like that the idea that everybody wants to be their own boss. Like everyone, you know, when we, when I talk to people who I used to work with that are like, Oh, that's great. I want to start my own business. I, I want to do my own thing. One of the things that, that really I got, I wish early on, but it wasn't early on. It was well into it is the idea that as a birth, as a business owner, once you take that on, like myself, once you step away from nursing, it's all on you. So your success and your and your failure is on you. Your income, your ability to pay your bills is on you. Yeah. So I think once you sort of realize that and not not taken in a way where you're you're anxious and, and panicking like I did, right. but just sort of understanding that the value of you putting effort into your business, there's a direct correlation between what you're going to get paid and how you're going to succeed. Is if you look at it as it really is on me. This is my business and it is to yeah. me to make sure that this succeeds. That's great. I have nothing, nothing, nothing else to, to add. add. <laughs> I think we can, we can wrap it up with that one because I think that's just, that's just what a summary of this, of, uh, of being an entrepreneur and, and having your own business. Uh, guys cannot be thankful enough for, for your time, for being here. We know how busy you guys are and, uh, and this is, it's great to have you and, and hopefully we, we can sit down together and, and have a cup of coffee soon and, and meet in person yeah. and, you know. Let us know when and good luck with the opening. Yeah, thank you very much. We're, we're very close. We're counting the days, the hours and minutes, everything. So That's we'll awesome. let you know and you guys can come out and just enjoy a cup of coffee with us. But we're very thankful. Thank you for your for sharing your story, for your advice, your recommendation tips for everybody that's going to watch the video. And we wish you the best in everything that's coming for Check and Brush. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, you guys very too. much for your time and for, for asking us to be a part of this. Thank you. You guys.